No, the government should be there to serve the people. Uh, we are in Milimani Loco today to demand the release of Julius Kamau. Uh, we are in Milimani Loco today to demand the release of Julius Kamau and other demonstrators who were arrested on Wednesday. They were peaceful demonstrators and they were arrested by the police in the CBD. Uh, Julius Kamau in particular was uh, assaulted and uh, tortured in the prison in the police cells. Uh, I saw him today and he has like wounds in his eyes and he claims that the police screwed a screwdriver in his ear. And so we're demanding for his unconditional release. He's a peaceful man, he's a courageous activist who's fighting for everyone in this country. Okay, uh, Bonface, we've seen uh, you've been here since 9 a.m. Uh, yes. Now it's actually 12. One, it's 1 a.m. Well, it's 1 p.m. Yeah? yeah, we've been here for about four, almost five hours. There's no magistrate in court, there's no prosecutor, and Julius is still in the cells. You've said that uh, the police uh, drilled a screwdriver in his ear. Yeah. How true is that information? So, um, yesterday when he came to court, he told the magistrate the same, that he was actually tortured in the, in the, by the police. And you can see he has wounds. His eyes are bloodshot red because of how he was beaten by the police. Uh, the magistrate ordered, ordered that he should be taken to to the hospital, but he wasn't taken to the hospital. So, if they, the police have nothing to hide, why don't you take Julius come out to the hospital? Other than following the judicial process to get justice for the victims, are you maybe probably looking at following different channels of justice for the victims? Complaints through IPOA. So, the moment he's released, we're going to take him to the hospital, and then we're going to go to IPOA, and we hope that he's going to sue the police for uh, illegal detention. He was exercising his rights to protest. He did not commit any crime. If you look at the videos of him being arrested, he was the most peaceful protester we had on Wednesday. He was carrying a placard. And the police even vandalized his chain. They took his personal property and destroyed it. He had chained himself with his own chain. What that means, when the police took the chain, they stole it from him. Also, they took his phone. He doesn't have his phone. So they stole, the, they stole his phone, they stole his chain, and tortured him. He needs to be released. We also saw an incident where uh, you and some of the artists who are trying to, yeah. to call for the release of the, of the demonstrators that turned ugly and those tear gas. Probably, and you know the demonstrations are not over, people are still, the cost of living is still high. Yes. Uh, what message do you have maybe for the law enforcement in terms of how they handle you, including handling a retired chief justice? I think it was very shameful to see them uh, tear gas William Tunga. And he was in a police station, which is a public property, and it's open to everyone. And he was going there to demand the release of activists. Instead of even just tear gassing us, they would have told us to leave. The moment between telling us to leave and tear gas was like 30 seconds. They told us to leave, then they tear gas us and kicked us out of the police station. We are hoping that as the protests continue, the police are going to uphold the law. And I asked the IG to stop sending police to protest with live bullets. You have rubber bullets, you have tear gas, you have water cannons. There's other ways of calling a protest without killing people. There have been protests in France, no one has been killed. It doesn't matter what people are carrying, you don't have to kill anyone. There's other means of uh, uh, disrupting a protest without killing people. Okay, Boni, um, Kwanza, uh, earlier today you tweeted and say uh, the judiciary system is slow, uh, <laughs> squeeze him, uh, wanna pick a trip, son, or make yeah. lazy. I don't know what you have to say about that. No, the judiciary is very lazy. If you go to Mother Comer's page, go to her Twitter page. Uh, she, you can't even comment on her page. Every time you go there, she's, uh, she's traveling, she's in a workshop, she's in a seminar, she's on a road trip, she's abroad. She never does any work. And so as the head of the judiciary, uh, people who work under her reflect on her character and her behavior. Because if you go to court, you've been caught for five hours. There's no one in that court. Because the judges are either drinking tea if they don't think they can do the job, they should just resign. If Mother Kome thinks she's not able to do her work, she just resign because you can't come here seeking for justice and wait for many hours and there's no justice. It's actually shameful that a matter that is very simple, like now his arrest, he has been in the cells for five hours. There's no sign of anyone to, to actually uh, process or even listen to the case. There's nobody. So what is wrong with the judiciary? It's Kome, because Kome is the one who is the head of the judiciary. You know, fish rots from the head. So if the judiciary is rotten, Kome is rotten. Uh, Julius is here on a bailable offense. Uh, probably, yeah. you know maybe the terms of uh, his 
Uh, the magistrate who um, who was in court yesterday denied him bail. Uh, in this country, you can be you can get bail for murder, for rape, for defilement, for looting, for anything. Someone who was unarmed holding a placard has been denied a bail. That makes him a, a political prisoner. Right now, Julius Julius Kamau is a political prisoner because he's been held uh, without bail on a bailable offence. Do you think maybe there is an agenda to keep detaining him so that uh, his freedom does not coincide with the upcoming demonstration? The agenda of the magistrate and this court is to please William Samoy Ruto and Rigadi. Because why are you denying a, a simple charge of illegal demonstration? Why are you denying him a bail? It's a bailable offence. So why is he in custody? And he's supposed to be in hospital because of the beatings he received in police custody. I don't know what you have to say on that. Uh, the, the only reason Murkomen went there yesterday to see the expressway is because there's a tender coming up. Uh, some floor pots were destroyed. It was a very small damage. He's already sent 700 million shillings for that damage. Who was able to do that such quickly cal calculation? Because if you have a, a quantity surveyor, a QS, to get that kind of condition, you actually need time. You need to go look for suppliers. You need to access the damage. But he's already saying there's a tender being floated for 700 million. So Murkomen went there to look for a tender for his friends. Um, I hope that Kindiki can go to the people who are injured, where kids who are beaten in school. Visit those people. Their bodies in the morgue. Go see them. Those people were shot by the police. But this country values property and roads more than human beings. People are injured. People are murdered. But no one is talking about the killed, the injured. They're talking about, oh, there's money for now. We must spend 700 million to repair expressway. Let me tell you, that road actually serves the rich and the upper middle class. That's why they were destroying it. They did not destroy the other buildings around there. They are destroying things that they don't use. What that road represents impunity, and that's why people are just destroying it. On your Twitter page, you said that other countries have mafia, while uh, Kenya, mafia serve the country. Yeah. Could you please uh, explain what that means? This country is run by gangsters. Everyone is a gangster who is in power in this country. If you look at um, William Root was charged with land grabbing, he was charged with uh, crimes against humanity. Rigadi is already in court right now as we speak. He has a, he has a pending matter in court about, uh, about stealing money from the Nyeri County, about 3 billion shillings. If you look at everyone in Ruto's cabinet, is a thief. Thieves run this country. You have to be a thief to be elected in this country. And I don't even blame the politicians. I blame the voters. They're the ones who elect thieves. We are governed by gangsters. And that's why they have gangster behavior. Bro, me, I've been in the streets forever. <laughs> I'm here. I'm in the streets. Here's the street. I was in court this morning. I'll be in court tomorrow. I'll be in the streets next week. Me, I was born an activist. I'll die an activist. Forever. That will never change. Ada kama dumechagulio na na yeye serikali azimio ni kikomba duko bara bara ni kikomba ofanya kazi yao. As that will never change. I call out bad character, bad behavior, a bad politician. I call out thieves every day. Doesn't matter if they're in Azimio or UDA, it doesn't matter who it is. As long as you break the law, I'm going to call you out, even if you're my friend. One word for a common one, Um This country belongs to all of us, and you must fight for what belongs to us. If you don't want the finance bill, you must tell the government that. If you don't want impunity, you must tell Ruto that. The moment Ruto was elected, we should all have joined the opposition, because the moment a president is elected, doesn't matter if you voted for him or not. He's the symbol of unity. He's the president of the Republic of Kenya. He's supposed to serve everyone. This, this talk of regarding saying we must be a shareholder, you don't have to be a shareholder because all, take, all taxpayers are supposed to be served by the president of the Republic of Kenya. And all the citizens are supposed to hold the president accountable to his promises. So what you say when you DM as me, you have to say that you have to Fight for yourself. This is always going to fight for you. Nashukuru, sana sana.